Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk Motocross. I am Charlie McNeil, sitting here with my co-host, Pat Mahan, and we have our special guest, Jamie Slaughter, joining us on the line today. He is the chairman and president of MSC Motocross. Right, so, Jamie, thanks for joining us today. Tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do for the MSC. Yeah, so uh, I uh, I guess I, I am the guy that uh, is the chairman or the president of the series uh, amongst the group of 12 to 15 other folks that are part of MSC's board of directors. Um, so I, I lead the charge, but uh, I do it with a lot of help. Um, a lot of people that uh, maybe you don't see so much, but they're there and they do it for the love of it. Um, none of us get paid. So it's not like, you know, the title might be glamorous, but it's it's what it is. It's, we, we love the sport and this is the way you make things move along when you do grassroots motocross or maybe grassroots baseball or football, right? The local Pop Warner guys probably doing the same thing. So uh, we uh, we meet every month from usually September until right around the banquet. Uh, we discuss, you know, the, the typical uh, changes or the things that we encounter through the season. Um, and we try to make modifications for things that are going to make the series better. Uh, we try to eliminate things that don't necessarily bring any value to the series. Um, and sometimes, uh, you know, it gets a little heated, but most of the time it's it's pretty uh, calm, cool and collected um you know amongst our little group that we have there um we do have rider representatives that are part of our series and the the riders can see them throughout the season if they don't feel confident maybe to come up to me and ask me a question um they can do that with the rider reps and uh, they bring any questions or concerns to the meeting um so then you know the riders do have a voice um and so it works out well i think sometimes um you know, a complaint that might, you might feel like it's a, a selfish complaint, but it really needs to get out there. We need to know what these things are. Um, it gets to those guys that, that are their rider reps and it does end up in our, our lap. And, you know, sometimes they're bogus, but sometimes they're legit. And we've made the, uh, changes to the series for the better because of those guys. So, um, but that's basically, uh, you know, the thousand foot view of, of the series uh, board. Um, you know, and, and beyond that, you know, what you see is really what we are. We're, we're here to support the, uh, the riders for their, their points. We're here to help with the rules that, um, that we have through the AMA and through ourselves and, um, and really just making sure that everybody has a, a good quality event to go to. Um, and, and if there's, uh, you know, again, any, any good ideas or questions or concerns, we're at the tracks and, and we're there to react to, you know, any things that we see. Right. Rider representatives are usually always at the track available to talk to you whenever you need to. Yeah. We have five of those guys. So, yes. um, you know, you've got Aaron Lampy, who everybody knows Aaron Lampy. Who's he, Aaron Lampy? I'm not, I'm familiar. Is he, is he good? Or somebody that. No, no, no he's not. No, he's Just really another good. guy. Uh, Aaron, Aaron is like the new district, uh, I'd say new, the last 10 years, the new district leader in the uh, expert slash pro class. Right. Not a lot of guys have been able to beat him locally, uh, at, at our racetracks. Uh, some guys do contend with him for a little while, but, uh, not many. So, uh, he took the place of a guy we all knew well, his name is Carlo Cohen. Uh, Carlo prior to him was, you know, we call him the leader or Kurt McMillan or any of these guys that came from the pro ranks that showed up and hung out here for a while. Right. Uh, they spent the rest of their career in the district. So Aaron's that new guy. And so he's a rider rep. Um, we have uh, Justin Gellhaus. Uh, Justin is our photographer for the tracks. And most guys know who he is now. Um, he's been around doing that for a little bit. Um, and uh, we also have uh, Mark Quinto. Mark Quinto is uh, his son, Chaz, races uh, in the mini classes. I believe yep. he's moving up now to amateur this year. And uh, so everybody knows them. Uh, they also work at Echo. They, they help run that track. So they're, they're in the game. Um, you also have um, Davey Sterrett. Yep. We all know Davey Sterrett, right? Everybody around forever. Wow, knows Davey. Um, Davey's on the DL list after his crash he had last, at the end of last season, which was horrible. Could have been a lot worse. Um, thank God it wasn't. And, um, and so we have those guys. And then we also, uh, you know, um, we have other guys that are in the mix too, like um, Walt Decker. He's a referee, but we also kind of use him as a rider rep as well because he's there at most of the events. 
Um, so we have him out there uh, doing his thing. And then Scotty McCoy, yep. um, number 187. That's our boy from Diamondback Motocross. Uh, he's yep. a club member there. Uh, super Pepper. helpful. Good friend of mine. I raced with him a lot and over the years. Um, you know, so he's in there doing doing it as well. Uh, so we got some pretty knowledgeable guys in those roles that understand what it means to be a rider. And they understand that um, if the problem's a problem, they'll get it. And, you know, they might have a, an answer for you um, at the track. So you don't have to wait so long, you know, to get, get something back from maybe me. I'm not out there racing every weekend anymore. Those days are. Not yet. Uh, yeah. yeah I, I'm going to throw my leg over this year. I, I haven't been out there enough to, to probably race. I need to do a little riding first, but uh, cause I'm way, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's the plan. The plan is to, to throw it down a little bit this year. I'm saying, if I'm coming back, you have to, <laughs> if, I, if I can do it, you have to do it. Yeah, I, might, I just can't let my wife know, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll just wear a different outfit. I'll wear like a bunny suit. She we'll won't keep know. her distracted. Yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah. <laughs> we'll have our wives go to her and keep her distracted. Uh, coming into the 24 season, uh, yeah. we got a couple new classes this year at MSC. Yeah, yeah, we um, do. Go ahead and uh, tell us the new classes that are out there for these folks now. So let's start at the highest level just because they're the premier classes. We changed the name of of expert to pro sport. Um, we, we have some Loretta qualifiers coming in and we're doing um, five pro-ams in our district this year. This is amazing. Five Which is, yeah, that's in incredible. And, and, and to get those things, you know, uh, AMA has been very, very good to us. We've been good to AMA too. You know, I don't want to make it seem like, you know, we're, we're like, please, please. You know, it's, it's a, it's a one hand washes the other kind of thing with AMA, right. which is good. That's the way it should be. Um, and they've they recognized our district strength and they've also uh, made things uh, set stages for us. So we had to, you know, we had to do some things to get some things. That's fair. And so this year we have five of those pro am. So we changed the name from the expert class to pro sport um, for that reason. Um, it's the same class, believe me. But, uh, you know, we we want to see those pro riders come in from a distance and and collect some of that money. We have some pretty big money coming this year. We always pay the best. <laughs> Let me get that straight. Every one of our tracks, we all pay the best. Right. There so you guys have an equal pay scale for all five tracks that we go to. Yeah. And we, we post. Yeah. It's it's great. It's a great pay scale. You can count on it. If you show up and there's five riders because it's a rainy day, we're not gonna you're not gonna take money away. And we don't do that. We're the district that you know we're riders because we're we're doing this because we're riders. We understand the the, the investment and the time and if you choose to come to our series, then thank you. You know, that's what that's all about. Oh, good. So, so we have that going on this year for that, for that class. Um, we did a girls class. Well, we haven't done girls in a long time. And then we did it. We got rid of the girls class because we just had a really low count and we needed some room uh, for other classes that had a higher count. But we've been noticing an uptick in the little girls that are racing um, in the junior classes or the youth classes. And we're going to give them a spot. And if they show up like we expect them to, then they're going to always have that class. And I believe something like that. If it's available, they they certainly will yeah, come. Absolutely. So if you're a little girl and you're you know of age and you fit in the, that group. Uh, check out mscmotocross.com. You can look at our classes, and and definitely you can you can slide your person right in there and and, and have at it. Um, we did change the the peewee names uh, to micro instead of peewee. Um, it's a name change that took place in the uh, AMA web or the, uh, the rule book and it lines up with the Loretta's races and we're trying to keep people from being confused if they show up at the Loretta's events yeah. so peewee just changed to micro um, we did add a peewee four to eight class with a one kilowatt battery energy uh, for the the bike that's that's on the track Right. So you got to read that close. It's not one kilowatt for power. It's one ki for, for wheel power. It's one kilowatt for battery energy. Um, and so 48 years old, any kids that are 48 fit right in that class. Right. So if, if any of the peewee parents have any questions, um, you can always go on the AMA uh, rule books there, the MSE AMA rule book and yep. just read thoroughly through, um, yep. you know, the rules on the E class because you have to read it very carefully and understand what you're getting yourself into in that electric class. 
Exactly. And if you go to the MSC website and you click into where our race classes and you scroll down just a little bit, you'll see the AMA rule book is right there. Just click on it. But if you go into the rule book on our site, there's also another tab for rule books. You can also get to the same rule book from there as well. Right. Just make sure you have a, a good internet connection because it's a very large file. It takes a little bit to download, but once you have it, save it resident to your computer or your phone. And then you always have your AMA rule book with you when you're, when you're at the track. Perfect. Yep. And then we added plus 45, I believe was another class. We did. Uh, we brought in plus 45. I mean, that's, that's a, a good a number to throw in there. There's a lot of plus 40 guys, plus 45 guys, plus 50 guys. There's even plus 60 guys out there. They didn't show up last year a lot, but we had a couple people call and they were disappointed that we were going to drop the plus 60 class. Yes. And, and you know what? It, what's the difference? We're going to try to throw it out again, throw it out there for everybody to try and let them maybe get a little bit more mojo so that, you know, they have to understand we do have a, a show to run. It's, there's, if you look at every one of those classes that we offer, add 10 minutes for every class, then you got to do it twice. Then you have to do practice. So we have to be able to fit this in. So it's fair for everybody to get the time on the track. We don't like to cut the three laps. So, so the riders just need to understand that if we don't, if we don't get the turnout, it's not because, you know, we're money hungry, greedy people. We're just, we're just trying to make it work for us. It's a very expensive thing for us to do these events. And we just want to cut, you know, we want to be able to make it make sense for us at these right. tracks. Plus 45s in, give it a shot. I think we're going to have a pretty good turnout for that. I think plus, so too. I do too. Plus 60s back in. And let's see what these old timers can do, man. If they can get out of the bikes and come out. And, yeah, the uh, old timers and the medium old timers, you know, the 45 probably like the medium old timers, right? You know? Yeah, no <laughs> Not doubt. Not quite old time yet, but like getting, I don't know anyone personally. Getting there. I don't know anyone personally, but. What I've found, and, and this is the truth, man. I mean, you could be 65 years old and totally kick my butt on the track, right? Because you ride all the time. Right. But yeah. you start going to the deli, eating sandwiches for lunch and start going to dinner and eating all the big plates of pasta. and th You become old really quick. And I, I did that <laughs> about 42 years old, man. I started yeah. eating away and I, it made me slow down a lot. So um, don't do that. <laughs> and no, but don't do it. We used, don't we used to have it. a plate in our kitchen. My mom used to have a plate and it said, age is the matter of the mind. And if you don't mind, it doesn't matter. It She's is. Right. She's right. And yes. also, I live by that. I know me and you both, we talked about it. We certainly don't feel like we're in our 40s. No. I still have the mindset no. of a 21 year old. My so. elbow feels like I'm in my 40s, yeah. but everything else is all right. Our bodies do a little bit. <laughs> so um, this year we are lucky enough. To MSC has, is holding two of the Northeast area qualifiers uh, for Loretta Lynn's. That's really impressive that the same district is uh, holding two events, which also comes into the new classes. So during the MSC um, events for that weekend for the area qualifier, it's all going to be combined into one. So you, yes, you can qualify for the area qualifier for Loretta's, but it's yeah. also going to be an MSC points day, correct? Yes. It's not a requirement though. It's the the Walden and Diamondback races for with the area qualifiers are not going to be day pass races, so okay. you don't have to pay the day pass to race it, but you do need to pay MX Sports twenty dollars per class to join the qualifier. Correct. Just sign up and you don't ask for the qualifier, um, and you you miss it. And if you don't sign up for it in the beginning, you don't get to add it on. You have to buy it all together up front. Yes or it doesn't work. So just so the riders know that are coming that never did this before. And again, I'm learning as I go as well, too. This is the first time where we are throwing one on a diamond back. We've been doing this a long time. Yep. So um, it's, it's $20 on top of the normal fees to get in the door uh, to, to race. Yes. Uh, for the, that's uh, for, for a lot of people that, that don't know that um, when you go to sign up for an area qualifier, you have to buy that MX sports $20 sheet before right. you get onto the track because if you say well i don't really want to try to qualify and then in the middle of the day you're like well oh maybe i do i'm doing good and i do want to try to qualify it's yeah. too late that's you right have to buy that in the morning so anybody that's going there just remember you do have to buy that sheet that morning that's right so this is the, this is the first time with a with a qualifier at diamondback definitely right like even yeah. in the history of diamondback so like what how did that come about like how did you manage that and then what kind of changes have to be like made or like what are you wanting to do on the tracks to uh 
to kind of like meet the level of what that is. So it's a combination of things, you know, I've, I've met some folks uh, that are influential within AMA and um, they, we all communicate through, you know, whatever reason, uh, whatever reasons, you know, I talk to Mike Burkina a lot. Mike knows everybody. He's in this, he's been in the game a long time. And I just said to Mike one day, you know, what is it going to take for me to get something like that? I really, you know, I I'm ready. I've been doing this a long time. I can run a really good event and um, you know, I just want it. And uh, he says, well, send some videos and let me see what you got. Let me see what your track looks like. And, and this has been going on for quite a while. I mean, I've been asking for a while. Um, and when we got to the new place, I think the first year I was up there, I kind of held back a little bit because I, I really wanted to see how we were going to do. I mean, it, it was brand new to us, a new area, new rider base um, for that area. So um, I waited till last year and then we did some videos and uh, we started doing um, some taping for some other thing we got going on. And um, I invited Matt Wozni up. Everybody remembers Matt from MXP TV. And before then, he was an MSC racer. His brother, Tyler Wozni, is a pro, a former pro. And, um, you know, I, I knew what he did because he did a lot of videos for us in the past. So I brought him up and I'm like, Matt, this is what I need. Do, do me a favor. Just knock it out. And he did, of course. And uh, so I sent a video edit over and they like the track. They like our flow. They like the, the, the look of the place. They like the parking. They were pretty impressed with the amount of parking we had. So um, I got the phone call and they asked me if I could do a certain date. And I was like, you know, it's too early. I can't. And then they asked me for another date, which is the one we've got. And I was like, you know, that's on the edge of maybe, but I, we're going to do it. We're going to make it happen. So they, uh, they they got us on board. Next thing you know, I'm on a conference call and around with MX Sports and, and away we go. And uh, we're going to make them proud. I, uh, we're going to do a really good job for these guys and, I hope that uh, it, it reflects uh, good on everybody from MSC and the, even the other tracks is we're not just in it for us. I mean, I'm not in it just for me, although, you know, dying back to my place, I want it to shine, but I want us all to shine. So hopefully this reflects good in our series and, and then we get more consideration for other things in the future or just, uh, Hey, you know, good job guys. Like we did when AMA showed up and gave us the a club of the year award in 2020, which is really cool. Right. It, it, that is fantastic. Um, yep. Just for our district alone, it's to have two of the Northeast area qualifiers is says a lot about how awesome this district really is. Yeah, it really exactly. does. I mean, and, and let's go back to also talk about Walden. I mean, we know Walden for years. We all, I, I, we're, I don't think anybody's old enough anymore really to remember before Walden, right? Right. Walden's been there a long time. Uh, we've all rode there. Um, you know, I, even going back to the days of, uh, you know, being a local kid in the town and, and, and getting lit in there by members because I was too young to be a member. My parents weren't like in the motocross, so I couldn't get that flow to go to the track, you know, with dad weed whacking or whatever. And and it's just a fun place to go. And uh, so they're, no doubt they get the Loretta qualifier. I mean, back in the 90s, they were doing Loretta's events. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, kudos to them for uh, always always keeping that place alive. It's, it's a tough thing, you know? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, uh, Kathy Fox, she's the president of uh, Walden mm -hmm. Cross, and she definitely puts in the work on that place on keeping that alive to constantly improve it, just like you do uh, yep. for your track. Um, so, yep, there's, that's there's, a good thing. There's a long, there's a long line of people, um, especially in the clubs, like Ace Motocross Club too. You know those guys. There's a long, and and even remember back to Southwoods, Phil Clemens. You know he yeah. was the president for that club there's a long line of people that, that made this happen. Um, and, you know, I don't want to forget, you know, and I didn't know a lot of them, you know, they were before my time, um, you know, but just, just, you know, even MSC, uh, Jim Fennell, he's the guy that was like the first president and um, before they started racing. And, you know, I, I got a hold of his kid one time and sent his kid uh, honorary card just so he had it, you know, just so, Hey, we didn't forget. We're not forgetting. Right. Yeah. If it wasn't for you guys. We wouldn't have 64 years in the books. Right. So, that's true. I remember as a kid uh, how different it was back then and all the yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And uh, as far as contingency for this year, mm -hmm. um, we got Kawasaki stepping up in a huge way, doing every event this year as well. Yep. Um, do we have any other contingencies for uh, for the year? Yeah. So we do have Cali for all the events. We have uh, Gas Cast, KTM, Husky for all the events. We have Yamaha for six. I just got the dates from Yamaha the other night. Uh, they just sent me an email to confirm the dates. 
Okay. And they should be up on their website by this at this point. So I can uh, update the MSC website now. Um, I'm waiting on Suzuki still, and something's going on there. Um, not sure what, but if you look at their contingency, they like have two races, and I think they're pro, both pro races. Yeah. Um, and and they really, you know, I feel bad because Suzuki is such a long-standing motorcycle company, and they gotta be in some issue. There's gotta be a, a thing going on there. And uh, so if they don't put forth any effort this year, then they they couldn't, and that's fine. We'll deal with it. We'll still support Suzuki. Uh, the best we can and hopefully they come back next year with a contingency program that works and maybe they'll just show up and say hey here's a few bucks give right. us your business. um and then um i i reach out to every once in a while i i've reached out to like beta there's some of these new companies that have motocross bikes now they're they're starting to show uh show up and they're not ready for it yet they want to send their pro rider out to one of our events and and collect some uh, uh pro sport money which you know Aaron Lampy might be there so i don't know if that's going to happen Right. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, so we reach out to everybody we can, you know, even Cobra. I'd love to see Cobra contingency. I've never seen Cobra contingency. Mm, absolutely. I see, and we have a huge Cobra following. So, um, and again, I'm not in the backdoor scene of where they all decide this stuff, but I do have a feeling that it's like they look at their market share and if we're, they're weak in market share, they might spend some money there to get their market share up. We're, we're, we're our area we're they're probably pretty high in market share and they might like us oh, we don't need to spend money over there because they're, right. they're in the bikes um and i get it but um you know give us a little reward you know, you know <laughs> something yeah, little yeah. bike little reward something yeah yeah so dan bb he's, he's at all our races and he works really hard and it would it would help him and i'd love to see it go so that he can he can get some more help that way so. right so even um speaking of dan bb He's yeah. one of our vendors at MSC. Um, we actually have a lot of great vendors and photographers at in this district. Um, yep. We have Valley Moto Shop, yep. who's there as a vendor. Um, some at some races we have what Pirelli tires are there sometimes. Sometimes, uh, yep. There's a vendor that comes in with uh, with tires by you know by himself. Yep. Like imagine, imagine I'm a brand new rider and I'm listening to this. Yep. Like, what can I expect? My experience, like I don't know anything. I don't have anything. I'm showing up in my pickup, like what's going to greet me at these MSC rounds. So like a new rider listening to this can feel comfortable coming, knowing that everything they need is taken care of. Like what, what, what do you, what do we have there? Well, I, I can tell you that you're going to be able to crash your bike and probably fix it and probably finish your day. Right. And that's our goal. That's Super important. We have vendors there at our races. Um, and we keep the same vendor. We support the ones that support us. Yes. But we don't bring any more in. I I have phone calls once in a while. I was actually just talking to Dan Beebe tonight. And I get a phone call maybe every couple of months. There's somebody else that's all excited to come in to vend. And, and I says, you know, like if there's ever a gap or an opening, you know, you're more than welcome to apply to it. But these are our people that are supporting us at every single event. They're supporting our riders and we're not moving them out of the way for anybody until they're ready to retire or sell out or whatever it is. Um, but the rider could come in and expect to finish their day. So you're looking at levers, and gl uh, goggles and handlebars and tires and tubes and things like that. You can fix in a reasonable amount of time. You're probably not going to find a complete top end with a cylinder and a head. And because those things are catastrophic typically, and you're probably going to go home and have to spend some money on your motor. Right. Um, but Dan Beebe will probably have a top end for a Cobra. You know, he'll probably have the whole deal, but, um, you know, expect to fix things that you could fix in the course of a, a few minutes or an hour or so that stuff's there. You're going to find gear, helmets, boots, uh, gloves, cool shirts. You know, you're, you're going to be able to find some stuff as well as food for even people that have never been there. We have a food vendor at every single race. You get hot dogs, hamburgers, you know, chicken tenders, drinks, sure. um, and vendor, you can get clothing, just like you said, you get clothing, you have uh, goggles there yeah. that you can get boots, anything else. And the awesome thing about MSC, and you could vouch for that, is everybody is willing to help everybody yeah. all the time. That's right. So, and that's why I love this district particularly so much. Anybody will give you anything if you ask for it. That's um, right. So, you know, you don't have to be scared going to the track thinking I, I don't have enough you will have enough at the end of the day because yeah. everybody cares about each other. Yeah, for sure. It's it's in our logo. It says family motocross right in there. Right. That's for the reason. Now, that was a, a phrase that was coined 
uh, many years ago um, by a, a former chairperson. Uh, you know, maybe it was Leah Brewer, maybe it was before her, but but that person said that, and we've never taken that out of our logo because we mean it. It's family. We are family. Yep. Right. It's so funny because like gr growing up and coming, like my my family didn't come with me, right? Yeah. And yeah. I used to see those you know you get the sweatshirts at the awards or like i get in the top 10 and get a sweatshirt and like every sweatshirt was like family motocross and then it like hit i was like always sad because like my family doesn't and then it like hit me one day and i'm like oh this everyone here like yeah. everyone here is my family like it's like a it's a different level of family and like charlie's saying like yeah I never had an issue at an msc race at a, where literally anyone and everyone that could didn't come to help make sure that I, either I was okay or my bike was okay, or I was going to get on the line or if they had it, I got it. Like, and that's where I like learned like how valuable that statement is, is because of the people that are going there every weekend. And there's the behind the scenes that, that you kind of like represent and manage and run and work with yep. and like how you guys show up really sets the tone for how everyone else kind of interacts, I think. You know, right. like it's like the the hub of what allows us to be who we kind of want to be there, right. and that's what I. That's like one of my favorite things about all the tracks and yeah. all the people. Like you never feel like, yeah, I really wanted that to be a part of this. Like a new rider who's listening, somebody sends this to someone and they want to race and they want to go out there and you know, or they want to come back to the district like me after ten years. You know what I mean? Like what is sure. it like now? And I yeah. feel like it's so important that they know like how good it is because so many people used to compare like ah, wow the way it was right. like it's it's there it's there we have it you know yep right it is there 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 was a new kid actually at um one of the diamondback races last year the kid forgot his whole goggle bag at home right and he was just walking around and anybody got goggles i said yeah i got you know I, here, here's two sets just bring them <laughs> back at the end of the day yeah. but i'm just saying if you ever need anything i'll always give it to All anybody right. on the track and i had no idea who the kid was and i still don't to this day but he brought him back and yeah. that's just what you do there. I that's take Charlie's stuff all the time. Sometimes just for fun. <laughs> I so. do two battles for <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then sure. uh, even for 24 now, a little bit this year, we got a little change in the system here about the point system. We have a playoffs series at the end of the year coming up this year. Um, do you want to talk, uh, touch on that a little bit and explain maybe the playoffs versus the points and how it all works? Sure, sure. So basically, um, we didn't we didn't make them like other racing series out there that do that where you have to you have to win in, you have to be a top three guy to get in. We left it open, so everybody's eligible for the playoffs. So we just we're calling it playoffs because we we change the point system once you get to that point, right? Um, the the spread of the points though if you look at the way if you know some math right the spread of the points is actually more narrow than they are where they are normally so I mean, it's actually first to second yeah. second to third that spread you mean yeah that spread so if you're consistently let's say a top three rider you're you're leading the points for some reason because the first second place guys are changing all the time and you're hanging out there in in first you, if you're consistent in your numbers, you're probably going to be all right. It's when you get 15th that it's going to mess you up, and it will definitely mess you up. So right. you need to either, you need to play smart. Once you get to those last races, you need to show up because if you don't show up, you're out of it. But you also need to ride smart and don't maybe not take a couple chances that you would at the end of the season because you're riding so good and you feel good. Maybe back off just a little bit, and you'll get your championship or. Maybe not. Maybe some other guys come in and knock you down a couple pegs. And then you got to ride harder and take those chances because the points are starting to tighten up. And that's the whole point of this, this points uh, series. It's different. It's not the same. Just like when we changed the points that we did about six, seven years ago, uh, Ralph Scanapico had the great idea of changing to the current point system, which is great. It works out really well. It does. <laughs> But the new point system, and it's it was nervous for people when we changed over at first. I mean, we used to do what five points? You'd get 10, 7, 5, 3, and 1, or 3 yep. and 2 back in the day. Yeah. And so everybody else was like, What's the sense of racing by the end of the season yeah, or so far? Yeah. <laughs> so now with this new point system, it's gonna be another step up to really make you race. They're going to make you think. It's not just about showing up and getting your usual spot. You're going to think. You're going to use your brain. So um, 
I think it's cool because I, you know, not because it's my idea, but it's our idea. So as a group, I think it's cool. We're going to find out. Awesome. So payout for our district. Mm-hmm. We already talked about how equal you know, all year long, all tracks are. I just wanted to emphasize to people like that uh, for the expert guys that, you know, are unsure, unclear of, you know, oh, I want to go try this MSC track or, or they're not sure, you know, if it's going to be worth me going for the payoff. Right. All of our tracks have the same payout every yeah. single week, one through eight. So you never have to worry about that. It's always the same. It's always the same. And and we're, we're you know, this is something that we did, I would say, 10 years ago. I know. So back up to um, Diamondback 2, right? The one that was down in East Durham. Yeah. Yep. When we did that track, it was our very first race, and Johnny come in, Johnny Cohen come in, and he's like, "All right, all right, let's talk about payout." It was like it was we were at the race, and we literally were like, talk, we were like coming up with the payout." <laughs> and so we broke out a computer. We had a, I had Excel on it, and I'm like, "Let's just make it, you know? Let's make the payout." He's like, well, "It's it's one for three because I was still new to the game, you know. I was doing the series before that, but I wasn't do, I wasn't doing the promoting of the track." And Johnny's like, "Listen." You pay them no matter what. You're going to pay them eight spots. I don't care. He goes, eight spots, no matter who shows up. So we made this this spreadsheet, which is the same spreadsheet today that you see. It's The numbers are a little better now than they were, but we made the spreadsheet up. And uh, once we did that, I shared it with Mike Gerda. And Mike is like, yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's do the same. You're the same as us. And next thing you know, we bled it through the whole series, and now everybody does it. It's part of our, it's part of our, our routine, right? Um, you know, and, and it's tough sometimes. Let me tell you, try to have a rain race and have like you know 185 entries, and, and you still have to pay. So it's you know, understand that for us, we're we're giving you the rider who shows up a big thank you, and you earned it. Thanks for showing up, and just remember us on the sunny days. You know, come on right. out and, and race our series because it's worth it. Yeah. That I, I believe that happened last year too when we were uh we yeah. had one of those really bad muddy races. And yep. I remember you were gracious enough to still pay us for first and second motos and overall, even yep. though we only did one moto. Yeah. I mean, I'll never forget that. For us, what's the difference? We took the money in, so we could run two races. Probably wasn't good for the bikes. Right. The, no. riders, the, the riders were okay with not running the two motos. Yeah. But we're still taking them the same money. So we're going to pay it. And that's, that's the way, you know, it's, it's all about integrity and it's all about uh, why, why, you know, what are we really here for? We're here because we love the sport. And it's also good. if you want to check um payout scale is available to view on the MSC website. It's, it's printed out in uh one through eight form. You could check it out. Yep. You know, per moto and overall. Yep. And, and one uh, last thing, by the way, you know, it's been a little bit of a secret because we're trying to come up with how we're going to do this, but we are going to do this. We are putting up a really nice expert purse for the banquet this year. At the, the last at the banquet, um, we're going to pay out the top ten racers for being for winning their awards for the the pro guys. So the, the two fifty and the open or the we'll call them the pro sport guys. Okay. Two fifty and pro sport guys, they're going to get nice checks at the banquet. Um, we're going to post up those numbers. You are going to see a motorcycle pop up we're going to raffle a bike off and that raffle the, the proceeds from that raffle are going directly into the the proceeds for that so oh, wow so me and you were running what 250 uh, open well, pro sport again I, I don't know about that i think yeah. i can it, try it <laughs> <laughs> it's all good stuff and you know we, again we're doing this because we we think it's a great fit and our pro riders our pro expert riders they're all worth it they all earn this they're all with us for the season mostly right oh so at that banquet isn't it cool to put up that cool trophy and the check yeah like, hell yeah. yeah it's it's, it. it's a big incentive for those uh 250 and open pro guys to really yep. you know put it in the year um to try to get us it really is a result that's i mean that's a solid a solid motivation to, to go for it for this year i feel like you're you're about to have like a little bit of an increase in your 250, 450 uh, entry, entry fee because like, I think that's like, so, so I know visual visualization is such an important part of like accomplishing these goals, you know? Right. And right. I know that when I was winning, you know, the, the titles that I won, what kind of like got me through rough days was imagining like being up there and, you know, getting the number one play or getting the, you know, the award, like you have to imagine that to make it like real to want it. Yeah. So now you throw in, 
that moment with a yeah. check and like yeah. it's a little bit more like all right let's go and you you know i think that's going to get a lot more people much it, more uh emotionally invested it makes a rider you know pick up after they've fallen on the ground and their bikes in pieces yeah. and instead of rolling it over to your trailer and throwing it in and going home you're going to go see dan Beebe, or you're going to see eric kidney and value motor shop and and you're going to fix your bike and you're going to get back on the track because you need those points because you want to get in the, the championship chase and then you want to you want to win your title or you want to get your top 10 to get your get your money that's yeah, what you're absolutely. Doing. it's it's so much of an incentive i am 46 years old i haven't really touched a bike in a long time <laughs> and talking to you i'm like i could if i went every weekend i, I could probably get, i don't know i'm not saying it's reality i'm saying like it's even got me thinking about yeah, it has the, people, me thinking. the people who could actually do this i feel like they are gonna think about it yeah i mean i'm sure i'm sure you know he came up with this i'm sure the payout is going to be well worth the effort at the yeah. end of the season yeah, of course, anything really 100 percent. i mean our goal really we're trying to come up with 10 grand and we're so five grand a class and you know so that's a really good payout that's the end amazing the yeah and plus you get your payout throughout the season right so you really come up with some coin you know if you really put your head down and you really try hard and you know you're up front you, you know you can make some money doing this and, and, and i mean and you add in contingency into all that oh look contingency is insane this year that's it, how it it is if you're on a kawasaki or any of the ktm products of gas gas or husky you're and you're up front you're making money I mean, right. you, you can virtually go and ride and put a paycheck in your pocket and and maybe maybe live off of it. Depends on how you want to live. But, you know, or you could certainly buy your bike for next year off of it if you do good. Right. You, know? you know, there's there's opportunity in this. Uh, you know, it's funny. A couple of years back, Phil Nicoletti showed up. He, he rode Diamondback. I want to say it was like 15 or 14. Or I was there for that. I remember. And and so he was talking to us and he he's like, you know. He's like, I made more money this weekend at your track than I did working, you know, racing a pro national nearby yep. because he had a bad day. He qualified in, but he had a bad day. He's like, I made more money here. He's like, it's just crazy. You guys are nuts. No, it's just this is the this is the district that we are, and yeah. we oh, we definitely did. we definitely want to make sure yeah. that our riders are paid uh, what they're worth. Very so, lucky. That yeah. I, I think that was the day too. Uh... I said, I think Seth Rarick was there battling it out with him. That yeah, Seth was with him. Um, Phil, I think, I don't think Aaron was there that day. I don't remember. No, he wasn't. Uh, Scotty Sheik, was there. Scott Sheik was there. Scott Sheik was there that day. Scott was riding. He just said, come back, you know? So yep. there was some pretty, pretty heavy talent there. I think, uh, uh, I don't remember who else, but it was a great day. It was, you know, it's, you see a guy like Phil show up and, you know, Phil, we used to race with us all the time back in the amateur days yep. when he wasn't traveling with his dad, but it was good to see him. He's a great guy. You know, like they call him Filthy Phil, and he yeah. says it like he means it. We all know Phil. You know, that's – that we know Phil. Phil is a great guy. He's Growing a, up, we all grew up with Phil, like awesome. when he was a kid. We yeah. know the real Phil. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. So, He's an awesome, awesome dude. He is. So he, he does tell you like it is, but you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. Nope. So I like that, but uh, yeah, fun times. But again, it's, it's all part of, of, of the district and uh, we're uh, are excited for 2024 and um, we're hoping that uh, everybody, you know, sees all the effort we put in and, and, and partakes in our racing series and makes it, you know, a lot of fun for us to, to run these events and uh, hopefully the weather. The weather's on our side a little bit this year, you know. Exactly. Uh, it's starting off better than it has, uh, you know, with uh, sunshine. I know a lot of people have been getting a couple weeks of riding in now already leading up to it. And Yeah. Um, two years ago, uh, I remember it was almost to the day today, me and Jimmy rode in a snowstorm to practice for the first race. Right. So it's it's incredible how much riding is getting in this year. So. It's first great. race of the year is at Walden. Uh, it's going to be a pro-am race. It's a Chris Moore memorial race. Uh, Chris yep. Moore was a um, member of our district. Yep. Um, fantastic person. He was always around a local pro guy with us. Yep. Recently lost his um, battle to cancer. Yes. And um, this, is, this first race has contributed to him 
And yeah. um, there's, and I know uh, for Walden, there's a lot of raffle prizes going on to um, raise money for the Moore family. So yeah. I know they have a lot of great prizes there going on. So opening weekend should be a, a very good one. And it's also a pro-am event. So I'm sure yeah. there's going to be a huge turnout. It's, it's a kickoff to the series. You know, the whole Chris Moore, Chris, good kid, but a great kid. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a special event now uh, with that. Uh, it's great for his mom started Chris Moore Foundation. Yep. And, uh, you know, so let's support those who uh, are part of our deal. And, and he certainly was. Um, but yeah, Walden put some effort into this to help out that, that whole deal. And, uh, so yeah, the Walden Pro-Am event, it'll be a, it would be a banger. Hopefully, uh, again, we get sunshine and, and they get a great turnout. Um, that'll be good. So I think, uh, we go to, we go there, then we go up to Orange County next. Yep. April 21st. Yep. April 21st. And, uh, that'll, that'll just be a regular, uh, MSC championship, uh, point seat, uh, weekend. Um, and that'll be a fun day you know, getting up to Orange County. It's always exciting there. It's, it's a, it's a tighter track, uh, makes for exciting racing. And, uh, so we have, uh, we have a good time every time we go to Mike Gerda's place. My heart rate's already going up a little. <laughs> it is. I'm like, oh, shit, it's coming. Mike, I know. Mike, bro. With the ruts. Mike, Mike and his ruts, you know, he, oh. he loves his ruts. He does. Yes. And, and not everybody loves the ruts, but not everybody but, does, but we're trying to learn how. If they learn how to ride the ruts, they can ride anything. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and I think we go back to Echo Valley, um, April 28th. Yeah. Um, that's a double points event uh, up at Echo. Yep. That'll be a, a fun event there um, up at Coyman Hollow. And uh, after that, we're back to Orange County. Uh, that will be a pro-am. And uh, – That'll be a, a fun race there uh, because the pro am you get the fast guys showing up there as well. So we get some exciting uh, pro sport racing, and then after that it's area qualifier time. We have two events: May eleventh to twelfth as at uh, Diamondback, and May eighteenth, nineteenth at Walden, and uh, it'll be a, be exciting for us. What's wait. what's what's exciting about that too is uh, the regional is only a few days after the area qualifier at Walden. That's right. The That's very great, right? the very next weekend. So um, you know, if you do go qualify, make sure you mail in your stuff or do it online right, right away, away. Right away to go to the regional because I believe you only have up until like that Thursday or Friday to get it in. Yes. Um, also, you know, we're, I'm gonna put a link up on the MSC website for pre-registration for those events. Um, I'll put yes. a special link on the front page. Um, we're going to want everybody to pre-register if they can. Uh, we're, we're for us at Diamondback, it's the first time we're ever going to use trackside, uh, software for scoring. We normally we use extreme score for, you know, through the whole season, but, um, it's a requirement by MX sports to run that. And so, um, it's new to us. So we want to make sure we get everything in as quick as possible and we don't have any speed bumps along the way. So, um, I'll put those, those links up on, online uh, for pre-registration at Diamondback and at Walden. Um, and I'll put them up in advance so that everybody can get to them. Is that um, going to be, uh, is that a mile lap system transponder kind of race? Yeah, it is. Um, and we're trying to figure that out now, whether we're going to use the transponders at our place or not. You know, it's not, it's not like we're used to ours and ours are really cheap. You know, they're, they're inexpensive to get into. Right. Um, and I have all the stuff for it. So for me to do this, I have to either buy or rent it you know, we're a couple thousand bucks just to rent it. And we're, you know, probably $8,000 if I was going to buy it. And, um, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't never use it before. And I don't plan on using it, um, after this. So, hmm. um, but we're going to try it and give it a whirl, see what, how it, how it does. And, you know, nothing bad to say about trackside. They've been doing it for a long time. I'm trying, I think they're the first ones to do this. Yeah. Um, but uh, again, we, you know, we got our own stuff. So it's like, what are we doing? So, uh, we're going to, we're going to run it for that race. And, and, um, you know, if we have to buy it at some point in the future, we would, but for right now, I think we're going to, we're going to deal with it. But again, pre-register online because, um, you know, that's one less thing that we have to have on, on for entry on race day. And if we have any issues, it would be better to not have those kind of issues, things we can. Yeah. Pre-registration is definitely the way to go. Um, uh, but when you do register on, uh, previously online, you just have to at least make sure you go to the booth to check in, um, just to make sure all your information is correct and that to check in kind of that you're there. 
Yep. And then one last race I want to bring up um, is the Ace Motocross race over at the Wick. And that will bring us through May. That, that finishes out the spring, um, May 26th um, at the South Wick. And again, that's uh, a fun place to go. Everybody knows the Wick, uh, pro national track. And um, we always have a good time when we go up there, um, you know, messing with those New Englanders. You know, we do have the Yankees and they just can't get over it. But <laughs> just kidding um that that's uh my buddy rick who runs that place is uh just a gentleman and um his crew there Janine and vic and the crew there his son um they're great people and we've been dealing with them for a long time and of course the guys at ace club you have terry finkel who's the president yep. of ace now and uh, walt marshall and um they're part of our group they come to our meetings and uh you know they're just good friends of mine and we're always here to support them uh, we're glad that they're part of our series that's for sure awesome all right so thank you jamie slaughter for joining us on the, this episode um we're very happy to be going into the 24 season and looking forward to everything that you guys do for us we really are thankful for everything that you do for us for msc and we'll hope to see everybody on round one at walden on what April sixth? April sixth. April sixth. Pro Am race Saturday practice Sunday race. Thing. It's gonna be a round one. Pro Am. We're gonna get right into it. It's gonna be a good season. If anybody needs to get in contact with you, how would they go uh, go about getting in contact with you? Uh, just go on the website. Go to uh, mscmotocross.com. There we have a contact page. It's got our phone numbers. It's got email addresses in there for whoever you need to contact. It'll say the positions and reasons to call us and uh so just go there and everything's easy to get to i mean i get phone calls like i said all day long i get phone calls for msc and uh when i can pick up i do and i help out when i can so perfect all right yeah. jamie thanks for joining us and uh we'll hope to see you at the track thanks guys have a good night see you, brother see you.